we got going on here, Maria? Is it just slobbering? Can stand dogs. Okay. What did you sure. just tell them? I'm teaching them that if I'm giving one dog my attention, to not come up and try to interact and steal their attention. Wait for me to leave him and I'll come to you so that they're not fighting over me as a resource. Because everything's a resource and, that, and that's what they'll end up going after. Um, anyway, this is what Rue likes to do, but now I'm gonna go give Mac attention and I expect Rue to uh, give me that boundary to stay, you know, a few feet away or whatever across the room. Just don't try to come interact unless I offer you to. Good. Hello, my friend. The nervous oh, energy. Mac, that was wonderful what you did. That was wonderful. See, out of the corner of his eye, he's looking at Rue. That's cool. See what I mean? Yes. So Rue's going to come up, watch what happens. sensing a grudge no grudge it's, no, it's not, very it's, it's a higher concern. yep yeah. mm, that's what i'm feeling too yeah dominance and all that good control and movement is part of what a leader would try to do if he's trying to control that's good you, you're great that's good see all right i see him i saw it too and i could feel because it because he wants to correct the movement i want to correct the movement too mm -hmm. i'm letting this happen right now to see you know because that that this this because we're all this we're all just correct. calm Everyone's calm. Me, Riggins, Josh, Rue, uh, and Mac is anxious, panting, pacing. If I was doing this in a room full of my buddies back home, we're all hanging yeah, out. Yeah, they would tell say, you to chill out. Dude, chill out. And if I didn't, what the fuck are you doing walking around the room like that? Yeah. But seriously, so, though. Rue's not wrong. It just it gets corrected. It has to get corrected. <laughs> uh, the anxiety. So basically, it's something to keep in mind as far as the reason why this is going to be successful is because I'm living with them as a pack. I'm thinking through the pack mentality and I'm thinking my position as leader and I'm maintaining the, the hierarchy, right? They're both below me and they're not allowed to fight over hierarchy. They're not allowed to have those types of conversations, which he's aware that I already told him I don't like it with other dogs before Mac came. So he hasn't done it with Mac yet, right? But I can see because I can read him. When Mac started to get anxious and pacing, he was already thinking like, yo, you're gonna correct this? Because that's what we're supposed to do. And I'm like, yes, I am gonna correct that. Right? Once he knows I'm going to do it, just like Rick, he learned, you know, once they know you're going to do it, they'll patiently wait and they'll be like, come on, can you do this for me? Can you correct that? You know? Um, and the truth is, is that should be corrected in the pack. That's mm -hmm. just the way that the harmony, harmony will stay. Then, uh, so what I, what I was trying to say, what I was trying to remember to say is the uh, instability of the anxiety gets corrected in the pack. Always. That's why some people think it comes out of nowhere. The dog starts to get anxious and then that dog will get corrected. Right? So they try to keep those levels more stable. It puts the entire pack at risk. Yes, if in one nature, dog is anxious. Right. It's gonna it's gonna ruin the communication system at the very least. And also the mechanism that's at play, I believe, is just frustration and annoyance. That he's not thinking you're gonna ruin the the species here. You're not. Right. He's just annoyed and he's re reacting on it, and it happens to have the proper effect within the pack. 
Um, anyway, as dog owners, we should be we should be correcting anxiety cycles. Anyway, hey, knock it off, go lay down. That's what works. I've read some, you know, I've read so many books with years of of a program that will extend a year or two, and it doesn't even work as far as anxiety. You know what works? Knock it off, go lay down. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So he's just thinking like Mac right now. Mac's thinking about where do I go? Do I go to the cash? Do I go over here? Do I, you know, what, what am I? What are my options? So he's running through them. Can't wait for him to learn place. He's, once I start interacting with him, I haven't disagreed with it necessarily that firmly, right? This whole thing here, yeah, which I will be. Yep. I'm going from big, from big to small, trying to see what would happen if I didn't come up here and start restricting them. What would they do naturally? The relationship plays a big role because he was behaving as my follower. And that made, rather than not, rather than independent, right? So he was going through me. So he was saying, what do we do here? What do we do here? The whole step of the way from the potty, from going out of the kennel to the potty to up here, he's looking at me and saying, what are we doing with this? And that's called me leading and him following, which is the recipe for success. The commands are just the communication. So he understands what I'm saying. Doesn't mean he's gonna listen. Good. Break. You see, that behavior gets. Absolutely. So, so what he just did to Rue, <clears throat> Yeah, Mac is what the he problem. Just did to Ru, I'm not saying Mac's the only problem. I'm saying what I'm seeing here. What he just did there is Ru. fight in words. Baby. Yes. Fight in words, baby. Because I'm a resource, so he you know, cuts him off, right? Yep. So, you know, you're saying it's not just he's attacking because he's a bad, evil dog. Right. He's just being a dog. Yep. And this guy, look at the state he's in. That gets corrected. That gets corrected. He's sitting, but he's still... Ooh, vibrating. Yeah. He can't stay still. He can't even stay still. These are yep. what dogs do. I just learned from that. Yep. And it's so. annoying to people too. Like I don't even If you have the mentality, like it. some some people it just goes right over the head. The dog yeah. can stress right in front of them, literally have a meltdown and they're just like, hi, hi. Yeah. If you like that, then your dog's gonna be, you know, getting attacked by other dogs because they don't like that. No. Dogs really don't like that. No. He wants to correct him and go as far as he has to go just for that to stop. Yep. And if he did and he was successful, um, he would, he, when it was all over, he wouldn't be doing that. Right. He would be over off, relaxing in the corner, licking his wounds, but then the he would be reminded anytime his energy got that way, right? Yeah. Just by looks and if he kept going. So what ends up happening is they don't have to fight anymore because one of them's gonna kind of set the boundary, the other one's gonna listen. Yeah. And that's a hierarchy. If this, yep. guy's able to, if this guy's able to set a boundary and then that guy listens, but what happens is, and I'm not saying he's right, he attacks this dog. He's attacking him because that's what and, he, fight and he's fighting, fighting back. back. Remember, they're fighting back. Yep. He's, he's, he's doing the initial. Yes. Right? And then Always. they're fighting, right? But like you just seen, they're walking and, and, and you know, Mac just went like this to him. And so I can imagine before training, he would say, What the fuck's your problem? Yeah. And then there would be a fight. Yep. Um, so who really started it? If you can't see because we're so wrapped up in the day to day, doing this to the next, and I'll get the dog and the dog, the dog's just stuck in. Yeah. Crazy town. And then another dog is part of the natural world comes in and says something's off balance. Here. Yes. So he's literally, I'm not saying he's right. I don't want him to have the, I don't want him to think that that's his position because yeah. he overreacts. He's not very good at it. You know, I'm talking about real. Yeah. Correcting. Um, so, and then it gets out of hand yep. and keep, dogs are getting hurt. So he's getting hurt, you know? Oh yeah. When he lifts his neck up, you can see the scars on There's his neck, scars his, on his shoulder. Shoulders. It's yeah. a bloodbath. So. Um, and the owners have been bitten. But look at the difference in their states, though. Yeah, I know. Granted, Rue's so cool. granted, he just got here a few days ago, and he's been here. But a he few was weeks, never that anxious. But he was never that anxious. He's more stable, but he's correct in instability. Now, now, how do we solve this? Really, I haven't. I don't think I'm gonna get a fight out of these guys, honestly, because of your influence, the, the relationship, I, the influence I have over him, and then also that I'm gaining over Mac. Mac and I have less experiences together. Otherwise, he wouldn't be panting like that right, right. now. Right, we have more th things to do. Because Mac's still thinking, how can I sneak, run, get out of the situation? Not how do I live? What does my leader want me to do right now? Mm -hmm. That's a follower. He, he's he's complying enough, but he's not fully committed to a yeah. hundred percent following a human, which he will be with you know as within a week. So, but he, I've seen him since he's been up here. He already thought about running down here. Yeah. He already looked he's at looked the at the door. door. He's gotten and up on the couch. He exits. Yeah. He's playing his, he's trying to like, he's trying to like play full a little bit, but he's, I can see right through it. He's drooling so much, you're at risk of slipping. So, I doubt he does that at home, unless there's a, a, a trigger like an event or something. 
that they're going to do an activity and then he might pick up his anxiety. But right now, he, he knows what's going on here. Right. He's up in this, he knows we're in a training session, he knows Ruse here. He knows enough that if he does one of these behaviors that we don't like, he's going to get corrected. But he hasn't been around long enough to know the system well enough to know exactly what gets corrected and exactly what to do to stay out of trouble. Rue knows that because he's been here a couple weeks versus a couple days. I'm going to let it happen. I doubt he's, they've ever seen each other hold still and have compliance like this before. So they're going to get rare opportunities to sniff each other without intensity. Rare opportunities to actually peacefully say hello and stuff. Come on, great. This is interesting. Great. Good. Come in now. Good. Much better that time. What's the obsessive um, mouth licking? Who, him? Yeah. Did you see that? He has a strong desire to climb the ladder in a hierarchy. Some dogs have a more, it's like motivation to, to, to like get higher up in the pack. He, he, it's either that with him or he simply wants to control. He doesn't care about hierarchy, he just wants to control the environment. You know, he's the, he, I don't like you, Mac, running around, or I don't like Mac getting in my way of, uh, of this or that or whatever. But what, but what he's, he's just being natural when he fights. I mean, this is what dogs do. We're just, they force us from these, from these traumatic experiences to like enter the natural world. It's very uncomfortable if we've been, um, we've been kind of like in the modern, you know, day to day. We're not really in the natural world. We like to think we are. But then when something like this happens, we have literally these animals fighting in the house. That jarring, uncomfortable feeling is, is being ripped and put right back into the natural world yeah. because we brought it into our home. The beauty of it is, is they're gonna teach us the lessons that we need to, look, to learn to have harmony in the house. Look, you can see, I mean, I hope you can see that he's trying, Rue is trying to stay out of trouble. Yes. That's what I'm seeing. He's leaning heavily I'm not saying he's perfect. I'm just saying that right now, just my, it's not the commands. If I didn't have any commands on him, it wouldn't be, he would still be trying to do what I like. Yes, right? even just, though he's being so annoying. So annoying, it could be worse. <laughs> Let me give Max some credit. Max trying a little too. Max giving about 75%. Yeah. Which is a lot, but it's not 100%. Um, which is fine. I just let this play out before I start dealing with Mac here and start getting this other. Um, because this is what's getting corrected. Almost, I mean, absolutely certainly. Whether it's because he wants the dominance, he, you know, he wants control, or he's annoyed, whatever one, it's, it's because the anxiety and his instability is annoying. It's really, you know, it's built in them to the correct. It, I can if feel the vibration. If he hung around Riggins and they were too, and they were close, and Riggins can't get away, he would want any yeah. dog should want to correct this. Yeah. Um, if they don't, then some of these dogs are kind of just like la di da di da. Some dogs, yeah, they're bred out of them. But a lot of dogs aren't like that, and they're they're very in tune with like that natural primal stuff. And in the prime, in the primal mind, it's like when we're hey, when we're chilling, knock that off, and. Who knows why? But I think Julie has a point. I think it's part of the survival. Well, the pack. it puts the pack oh. at risk. Imagine there are a pack of dogs in the wild and everybody's calm except for Mac. It's going to draw attention to, to them from other predators. Right. That's what I'm explaining it as. And also the communication, I think, would be harder to get through to Mac on these subtle communications. Absolutely. Because, yeah, he's you know, just not so, with so the see dog groups of dogs in the wild or even street dogs that are together doing this unless they're no. hot around each other because it's it, it gets corrected and even so if they are hot, way of saying correct the anxiety even if they are hot the whole body's not vibrating no no no, no. this is stress he's not hot we're no one's hot you know he's like nose breathing riggins is not hot nose breathing. <laughs> i didn't tell these dogs to breathe so we have hot. the air conditioning on <laughs> but this is contagious so so as i was had him close to him I noticed as I was talking, he was starting. He was starting to pant. Yeah. So, because he's, you know, it's, and then everybody's fucking falling apart. Yeah, I feel like I'm on edge just having. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's crazy. But imagine this. this. He's listening right now because he's holding still. Now take that and he's doing this around the living room. And you got wooden floors. Clickety clack, and clickety clack, clickety clack, and clickety clack. And then you know one of the one of the people in the house is trying to tell him to do a command and that's not working. So now you got them chirpity, 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 chirp, chirpity, chirpity, chirp. And then I, if I'm living in that house, I'm like everybody, including the human 
quiet. That's how I was raised. And guess what? It just happens to be the way that, that rehabs a dog's mind. I just, mm -hmm. you know, I just got fortunate enough that the way that I was raised uh, helped me look at, and, and learning from the dogs, gave me enough knowledge to understand what to do when I see these behaviors. Instead of coddle, my instinct is to correct and then direct. That was my instinct before I even knew uh, the proper techniques. My instinct was like, I need to know how to correct this, right? And that's what works. It's called tough love, okay? There's mushy love, and then there's tough love. Mushy love is gonna make this guy stay like this and worse. And actually, m mushy love is gonna get them to fight and have bloodbaths. Right, and tough. he's going to lose his life he's and his house. Yeah. He's already gonna Because he's the one that's attacking, and she already said this is his last chance, and I don't blame her. No, uh, they're, they're, they're making a, a very responsible choice. They're sending him to training, uh, you know, a place with a good reputation. And then they say, if that doesn't work, hey, we love Mac. Mac was here first. This guy's got to go. Yeah, and Mac's not attacking. No, Mac's not attacking. See, Mac is less, uh, he'll, he'll protect himself or fight back, mm -hmm. I guess, you know. Um, which if he didn't, let's just say Mac didn't fight back, it would be over. Yeah, it would be over. 20, they wouldn't, listen to me, they wouldn't have 20 fights. They have one or two. Yep. 20 is because we stop it. But we stop it, but we don't step in and say, now you guys have to go through me. It's just free for all again, and we go at it again. We're stopping the natural world from figuring out, doing this thing, finding a hierarchy. Mm -hmm. we, but hey, I'm not saying that's wrong. Mm -hmm. I do it all the time. I don't let dogs do that. Because it could end up in a dead but dog. But I have to fill the shoes of who's, what he's trying to do. Yeah. And then I have to take it personally. Hey, I set these rules. If I catch you trying to set these rules, you got to deal with me. It's over. Yep. It's over if you do it right. And, and it's, I'm telling you right now, this isn't training right here. No. This is a little bit of training because there's down and there's recall. This is relationship. The way he's looking and the way I interact with him is I, he knows I love him. He knows that I'm going to give him. He knows there's lots of good stuff waiting for him. There's a lot of benefits of being my follower. But he also knows that if he crosses that line, uh, I do not take it lightly. The reason I'm talking like this is because I need a mentality shift. It's like These guys are... If someone's gonna leave here, somebody's not gonna survive this, right? So. Yeah, it's the same talk I had with Thor's owner today. It's just, guys, it's just the real world. You have to keep it with you, don't lose it. Don't get so into work and so into whatever, you know what I'm saying, I don't wanna say like the hot words, but you know, the phone, you know? Don't get so into that that you lose touch of literally how the natural world works and then we're like, we're lolly dolling you know, one day and then the dogs are attacking, we can't understand the concepts, we can't understand that it's hierarchy, because, or we can't understand, these are basic Pray things drive. that we know, yeah. we already know it. We all already know it. Deep down, you, talk, you, sit, you know, it's in there, it's just like we're just so comfortable every day and so busy with other things that we're disconnected from this. Mm -hmm. And even if we wanted to clean this up, who's got the time to say, all right boys, you guys are spending the rest of your days with me and we're gonna clean this up until it's done. Nobody's even got it. Listen, I'm not trying to make this a, a difficult or a tough video to hear for the owners because I, I don't even know them. I just, we see it ever so often and it's always the same problem, right? It's like somebody's not in those big boy shoes or big girl shoes controlling the, the show. We get the dogs because we want them to be pets for our kids or to make us happy when they come home. And that's just, that's not respecting the dog. And, and listen, everybody does that, you know, it's very much the culture. But, you know, Matt, for example, you know, he's, he's named by the eight-year-old, the kind of thing like that. It's like, it's obvious that we're just trying to get a pet, but we, if we treat certain dogs like pets, we're in trouble. Yep. We need companions. And if, you know what I mean? And so you have to raise a companion, you have to, you have to tell a companion what's wrong and then what's right. Yeah. It's not just, that you have to tell them what's wrong in a really real way. And so they know, he knows I'm not lying to him. Mm -hmm. So he's chill. Well, he knows I'm not lying when I say I'm going to protect you. And he knows I'm not lying when I say don't fuck with the rules that I put. I, because I'm not lying to him. I'm, I'm literally talking to him how I would in the natural world. If you just pick me up and put me in an island. I'm using these e-collars because we do this professionally and these are amazing and stuff. But I know because I've raised dogs and had been around dogs without e-collars most of my life. And I get a very similar uh, level of influence. This gives me a little more on the recall though. But it that. transfers it to the owners. And it, it, no, no, listen, this is the way to go. Don't get me wrong. I'm just, I'm just pushing the fact that relationship is first. Yes. Okay? Training and relationships should go together, but like, let's not forget that it's the dynamic in which the dog sees me and him in the pack. 
Right. It makes, it's, it's, it's the determination of whether the dog listens. So the dog knows what you're asking. Even without training, they know to come here. You know, I, I, I came from the mountains. These, these dogs knew how to recall. They knew how to sit. They, they knew how to do tricks. And nobody, nobody's a trainer out there. I didn't know about dog training until I was in my late 20s. Is that even a thing? Who gets a dog trained? What is that? You talking about tricks? I didn't know this was even a thing. And dogs are doing it. And dog, you go into the house and certain people can get the dog to go lay down and relax. And then other people struggle. And you grow up seeing the difference in the types of people behind the dog. I mean, at least I see that. And so, um, yes, the couple, it's a couple, right? They come up and they, they, they do this together. And yep. they support each other. That's what we did. Yep. That's what me and my last relationship did. You know what I mean? You, you, you have to, and what I love about this situation, even though it is a dangerous situation, it, it takes the people and it, um, it really sh makes the relationship stronger because you're gonna have to you're gonna have to get over this hurdle thing. right now if Julie didn't have the level of control I had over these dogs it wouldn't matter as long as I'm here right but ideally we both do it together which Julie and I have we we both have equal influence I might have a little more okay so I'm gonna give you an example of how you have more influence over I might have a little more than I do okay so oftentimes pretend these two dogs aren't here Josh will be in the room Riggins will be on place I'll be sitting here he will leave. What does Riggins do immediately after Josh leaves? He gets up and starts pacing around the house. What he I, would uh, never do that with Josh in the room. No. Ever. He, he knows when I'm going for a quick bathroom break and when I'm going <laughs> to like bed. And so, but I've been catching him lately after you told me because I didn't know. So when I'll come out and I'll like, I'll shut the door and then I'll wait and I'll come back out and I'll catch him kind of half doing it. And I don't have to say anything. He just goes back. Hauls his I, ass not, back to the bed. There's a rule. Okay. So there's underlying rules. You, I might share mine with you that I live with. I live this way with my dogs, whether they're aggressive or not, because I'm just used to dogs. I'm used to dogs fighting. That's dogs, right? Like this is, this would, the way I know dogs, this is normal. This is every day. This is stuff. Unless somebody takes that position and successfully is the leader, then we see it all go away. And that's the, that's the amazing part is it can literally just go away, right? So, um, for example, for him, the underlying rules is we're in this room. Don't be annoying. Don't be annoying. It's good. Correct. Annoying is good. Correct annoyance. Definitely. Listen, I'm telling you right now, if your dog's annoying you, don't lie to them by pretending you're, they're not. That adds up. You do that for three years and like your relationship's wonky, you're frustrated with the dog. Like the dog's annoying you. This is the, the best thing you can do is be honest with them. Knock it off. You're annoying me. What does the dog do after you tell them to knock it off? <laughs> if they don't knock it off, then what do you do? You see the dance, right? Everybody knows the answer to this. Everybody already knows the answer to this because you're human and you live this long. I mean, unless you're trying to be delusional, you already know the answer is you have to correct that dog, right? You have to give the dog a form of punishment, right? You know? So I say, dog, no, you're annoying me. Stop doing that. Whatever it is, plug it in. Barking, pacing, whining, whatever. Some of the smaller annoying annoyance ones. If the dog continues, I'm going to correct it. We have it's what dogs do to each other. It's what dogs. And listen, but if we do it, <laughs> they don't do it. And if they do it, it's much more messy. Yeah. We do it, it's just over. You know, especially because we got the e collar, we can say tap, knock it off. Nice, clean system. You know, and it works very well. Now that's not happening though, and I'm not. I don't know about these. Oh, I do know that's definitely not happening. Either the way it should but it's not happening anywhere the way it should and that's why nobody had if you have you ever noticed most people are just walking with a liability yeah. because they do not have control they're just looking to avoid triggers and things that might set the dog off and then if they do if the dog does get set off it's like thank god i have the leash but go on youtube and just find out how even with leashes how quickly it goes wrong but or look down look on your street you just look oh anywhere. yeah no dogs listening today i've seen a dog listening my mind was blown. I don't know who this was. But it was probably you, our graduate. It was in our, it was in our community. <laughs> and she was walking like in a heel with a dog. I could tell she was doing training. Oh, I saw that. It's a puppy. She it's had a, a dog. But it's in heel? Yes. It's not our dog because it has different tools and stuff. But it doesn't matter. It's just like that they had the thing going on. It blew my mind because you never see that. Yeah. You never see a dog. It was just simply a dog listening to a human. It just blew my mind. And so, by the way, Nobody. If I say nobody, faith. I mean pretty much nobody has control over the dogs. And a lot of people pretend they do, and that's the delusion, but they don't. And when the dogs get hit by cars, they, they fight, they knock somebody over, you got a lawsuit. They're just liabilities, literally. So take control, 
to save your sanity and uh, the dog's lives. Literally, because you know, people are afraid of taking control because you know, the climate we live in or, or are living in is like, if you try to take control and like form a hierarchy and say no and actually deliver punishment when it's needed, you're a bad guy. But that's not the natural world. In the natural world, that's everyday occurrence to keep the, 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 harm, the harmony, right? So we don't do the punishment properly. We don't take control properly because we want to be good to our society and within our community out there, the way other people see us, the culture, the temperature. We want to be good so we don't do the punishment. And then what happens is all of the consequences for not having a leader. Fights. Again, dogs getting hit by cars. Dogs eating shit off the counter. And, you know, getting hospital bills and all this. Just bad, bad, bad stuff because nobody's stepping up and, and doing you know, and, and everybody, for being honest, everybody knows that this is how the world goes around. It's how the world goes around. Mm -hmm. You know, even with, with my kid, if he was out here and I was trying to deal with these dogs and he was being a nuisance and I said, hey, bud, knock it off, daddy's working, and he kept going, there's a consequence, right? And then off he goes. And that's why he's not going to do that. He could be here right now. And if I ask him to stay in his room while I do this, we're going to be fine. Why? Because my relationship with him. I'm honest with my kid. So... It makes a difference. Take pride in this stuff because this is actually the real world. This is actually how it goes around and you can actually have a fantastic pack. And who knows what the relationship could become with the right influence from the people. Because what I've seen wasn't the worst that we could see. Mm -hmm. there, there's grudges. It could be worse. It, there's fight on sight, oh, which we've seen. Is there fight on sight? There's kill. Yep. There's fight and kill it as quick as you can on yep. the site. Yep. I mean, this was grand. Okay, if we remind the clocks and I introduced them before I had any influence, that's probably could have happened. But look at who is look who he's paying attention to. Look at this guy right here. Right look at this guy too, by the way. They're both just. Do you know how hard people are begging for attention? Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Relevance. They're looking at me because I. Well, look. Here's a, here's one of those underlying rules. Riggins isn't allowed to just pick up. And no one put him on place today. He just knows over because we've had, stop walking around, we're not doing anything right now. When we're gonna do something, I'll say your name and then give you the directions. And until then, just do that, that's great. And then you know what, when he's doing that, I come over, I massage him, I give him bones, I give him all sorts of good stuff. Just to keep promoting, I like that you're doing. <laughs> I really like that. <laughs> and he knows, I love that. And you know, okay, so, so look at me. I'm walking around. Because nobody's stopping me from walking around, right? But I'm using my influence to keep them from doing it. Well, Josh, why would you do that? You don't need to do that. There's nobody here. There's not. If you don't use it, and you can't have it in a quiet environment like this, then you're not going to be able to expect to use it in a real life, serious situation when somebody's at the door, or just a mild inconvenient situation where somebody's at the door and the dogs are going, <laughs> all over the room, and you can't get anybody to, so what do we do? We know we can't control the dogs, so we address the human. They're safe! <laughs> or whatever, right? Holler over the pack of dogs that we have no control over. And then when the situation's over, we don't think twice about how could I have controlled that. We just say, okay, boys, here's your bone. Here. This is just the way people think, so, so you know, of course not. What we need to be thinking is control and movement. We're, we're pack leader. You know, really, we're packing. What would he do? He's controlling movement. If this guy starts to, he's gonna attack him. <laughs> yes. Because that is it's dogs. What dogs that do. is dogs. Do. That is D-O-G, baby. <laughs> and they're gonna teach you. I, I love that. Uh, this, I love all the things that people complain about about dogs because it's a constant reminder of the natural world. And yes, and there's right. always a reason. They're not just doing always, it for no reason. It's never no <laughs> anybody who says it came out. It was, there was no reason. You attacked them for no reason. It's like yeah, there's. There's a always, reason. There is never not a reason. He's not in the command. I'm gonna let it play out. I would have already cracked him by now. He wants a comfortable spot. To lay. Sniffing the couch. Can you reach? The, I'm talking to the audience here. Can you read what he's saying? What he's looking for? What his motivation? He yeah. just wants somewhere comfortable to lay. Okay, so he wasn't looking to come over for a fight or anything. He just wants to come. But he's not getting on the couch because he didn't have permission. But. That's kind of what he just said. So for me, I don't have to, this is why, another reason why I think my dogs like me. I'll see that and I'll be like, oh, you know, if you're longing to do something inappropriate, I'll give him some play, I'll give him what he's looking for. If I see my dog kind of thirsty, they know, they have these polite way of asking, you know, Riggins will kind of just be like, 
they just kind of walk over to the bowl, you know, and then look at me, I'll see that right off the bat. So my dogs don't have to whine, they don't have to bark, they don't have to come nudge at me. Uh, I just, you know, he wants to sit, he wants a comfortable place to lay. If he was in a down and he got up because he wanted a comfortable place to lay, too bad. Tough love. Remember that. Too bad. Why? Because the core rule is, if I said to stay, you stay until I say otherwise. And you can see how practical that is. Rather than, if I say stay, get up whenever you want, that's not practical. So I am, I would correct that even if he was uncomfortable and put him back in his down and then wait a few minutes until that was kind of removed and then give him a comfortable place to lay just so I can maintain that freshness of just like how serious I take the commands. Um, but that's why I didn't put him in a down. He just he sniffed can, He can, I, yeah, he sniffed and look, he's, I'm seeing a little comfort because he's like, you remind me of home. So we're in this rare opportunity where they're both kind of somewhere a little bit, it's a little bit difficult to be here at times because they're in rehab. Rehab's not supposed to be easy. So they see each other and it's like, hey, that's kind of a comfort. And that's an interesting thing that I've seen from him. He's finding, and now look who stopped panting. Simply because we've talked probably forever and he's, he's, let go of whatever, the, like I said in multiple videos, that intense chatter in the brain like that, it can only go for so long. And then it stops. And then it comes back up. Because it's exhausting. So now we've talked enough. You get my point. You get my vibe. You can see why they were fine. And you can understand why they were fighting at home. And it should be clear as day. And if you're saying I, this video hit home and you know it, it was like we're embarrassed or whatever, then that means that you see it. So that's a good thing. Because, you know, it's as simple as we didn't have control over this one, and then we got that one, and we didn't have control over this one, and we just let them have freedom, and now they started fighting. And that's just like, that sounds about right of what would happen in my, in my head. I'm like, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, of course they're fighting. Of course they're fighting. All right, so he's not a bad dog, okay? I don't really think Rue's evil. Rue has it in him to be dominant, and he can get in trouble with that. Max is anxious. Interesting combo. There's going to be a fight, baby. Mm -hmm. All right? The, the way there wouldn't be a fight is if Max submitted. To Rue. To Rue. Yep, and but we've seen that before. he don't want to because this is his house and his humans. Mm -hmm. And you guys, you know, obviously believe that to some degree, and that's putting him up in power. So he's, he's not, he doesn't just have to fight Rue doesn't just have to fight Mac. Mentally, I get the vibe of like, he's the good dog, he's the bad dog. And I think that puts a little bit of a divide in the pack. That makes more competition, you know? Where what it is is like, it's like kids. I love you both equally kind of thing. I don't want to see any of this shit. Even if you do love Mac more, it doesn't make you bad. It's natural, but you don't want to kind of put that off on a day to day, like Rue's the bad dog and, and you know, because he attacked him 20 times. This guy's also not submitting either. Yeah. Uh, I don't expect him to submit, but if he did, there wouldn't be fights. Yeah. Because he would listen to rule. So he's like, he doesn't want to give up his position. However, let me be clear. He can't handle a high position. Mm -mm. That's why he's shaking, because he's got options. Because he's got, who's got options in the pack? The higher ups. The ones that are higher up has all the options and it gets less and less as it goes down. If we were all starving and there was a piece of freaking meat right here, one of us is eating most of it or all of it. And somebody's having nearly nothing or nothing. That's how the world goes around. This guy is propped up by humans. So he has a false sense of where he's supposed to be in the hierarchy. And now he, so he can't handle that. He, doesn't, he needs more, he needs more of a life like, like this. We come in a room. You know, go lay down, I'll let you know when we're ready to do something. When we're ready to do something, don't get too excited. All right, let's go. When we're playing the game or doing the thing that we can get excited, now you can do that crazy excited. But as soon as we're done, we're done. Let's go in, go lay down, I'm gonna go, right? So, structure, leadership, that kind of stuff, that takes away all that stress panting. Or however he's manifesting his anxiety, which might look like what people would say, happiness. I think happiness and anxiety, people think, people see a dog like doing this, you know, and they're like, look how excited he is. Mm. He's anxious. He's anxious. He ain't excited. And he can be excited, but unhealthily excited, you know, and that gets, by the way, it's unstable, that gets corrected as well in the pack. Another dog will correct that. 
So now Mac's gonna get corrected for when he's anxious and pacing the house. He's gonna get corrected for when he's moving around in a way that he doesn't like, he doesn't like, he's annoyed by. He's gonna get corrected around resources, right? Which is everywhere. He's gonna get corrected if he gets too excited about something uh, by Rue. I'm saying Rue's gonna do that. But that's, but, then if, but that's what I do in training. I literally correct all the same things that Rue does. So if you do that, Rue knows that you'll do that. And by the way, just, for, just to make this even a ruder video, I feel like I'm being so rude, sometimes you're so blunt, but I'm just trying to be blunt um, because I feel like that's the clearest. I'm trying not to dance around things. I correct all the same things that Rue does. Yes. Um, Oh, this is what I was going to say. See, I had a backtrack. I was going to say, I, I already said it. I didn't want, I don't want to be rude. I just, I have to be blunt because I think that's the clearest. I'm not going to let it go because I'm going to tell you. It is, if you don't see the things that we see as people annoying, I believe that that is one of the key factors that when people are talking about mentality. Because I just worked with yeah. enough like trainers and stuff to be like, oh, that person's got a good mentality. Oh, good mentality. Oh, bad mentality. Oh, good mentality. It's all about the mentality. So what is that really? It's just like, if somebody came in here with a dog and the dog and we were talking and the dog did something kind of annoying and they said, knock it off, I'd be like, they have a good mentality. Jules, that's person, you know what I mean? Yeah. Some people don't think the things that are that are annoying to, like say me, I'll use me as an example, and root, and most dogs. They don't think it's annoying, they think it's cute, they think it's funny, mm. they tolerate it. Deep down, deep down, I believe most of these people know that. They are that covering up good. the lack of control and using it as it's If cute. you can't beat them, join them. Yep. Or you really do like it, and then, then, I, then I have to say, like, this isn't gonna work then. And you've never had a dangerous dog. Right, and, a, and you don't know what a dog is. Yeah. You think a dog is whatever you want, you think romantically mm -hmm. what a dog is, versus what they really are. That's another thing that trainers, that do what we do have to ditch, unfortunately, is we have to say, let's see a dog for what it is, which is kind of like taking the romance away from yeah. you, right? But we get, the, we get the benefits of understanding a dog. But, but the crappy part is I have to throw away my romanticism. And that sucks because I like to play with those thoughts and I like the comfort that it brings me the way I can view a dog, mm -hmm. used to view a dog. And it was yeah. a tough pill for me to swallow to actually understand the nature of dogs. But the way we used to view dogs led us to the issues that we've both had with our personal dogs that led us to where we are now. Yes, which goes back to mentality. Now, my mentality, this is where I get back to my, my mentality was already the way that, of a good dog trainer before I knew what dog training was. Right. Because my instinct for things like this when I had my first adult dog, especially in a relationship, in a home where you're like, you know, the girlfriend's like, the dog won't stop barking. The dog's pulling me down the, the driveway. The neighbors are complaining that it's like in the windows and stuff. My instinct was, I, I, I knew I had to use correction and punishment. I, I knew that I could do it in a way that was, let's say, balanced and, and, and effective. Because I was already, I already had examples of that growing up with relationships that people had with the dogs around me. I seen people love their dogs to death and turn around and correct the dog for jumping on the counter or things like this. And, that, and so I, I, I didn't have that barrier of like, if I correct this thing, it's not gonna like me. That's where you're going, your dog is not gonna listen and it is going to get into dog fights if, it's about, if it has the genetics to. Uh, it is going to have more of a likelihood to get hit by cars and stuff because they're not gonna listen. The, the beauty of the dog is that they show us the real world. They show us the way that it really works here. So long story short, we're going to show him for the first time what he can do in, this, in, in a living space that is an acceptable and alternative behavior to pacing, worrying, getting into shit, and free roaming all over the place. Okay? This is going to give a structure. If neither of these dogs can get off this bed, guess what they're not doing? Fight. They're not fighting. And guess what? It works. But they will get off that bed if they don't believe you. <laughs> right? <laughs> And so, why don't they believe you? Everybody knows the answer to these things. Because right? you haven't so corrected them. And you, already, you, already, <laughs> you didn't need me to tell you that. And you're already arguing with each other saying, see, I told you we need to correct him. And then the other one's like, well, I didn't know. It's my baby. Or maybe you're both like, it's my, our baby or whatever. 
Everybody should know it's a well-read story by now uh, that that gets dogs, what we call like spoiled. Remember that? Your kid's spoiled or your dog's spoiled. What is it? Spoiled. Think about like spoiled milk. It means it's no bad. longer any good. It's bad. What do you, you don't want that. So if you spoil, and people learn a long time ago, they say you're spoiling your kid, you're making it bad. And you know, it's called, like I really think that tough love, if you know what that is, if you've seen it in your life, there's a mentality to start to understand. Techniques come second. You'll learn how to correct, how to deliver a punishment, how to direct. But mentality is first. If you don't see those things as valuable or something that you concern yourself with and you'd rather, you know, seeing the dog do this is cute, pace around and scratch or whatever the thing is, or coming up and begging, that's another common one. They come up and they beg for your food, right, and that kind of stuff. And, it's cute, and then later on it's not cute, and then they start barking at the table and we can't stop them, and it's like, pause on all of life, and let me just for a second, you know why. Everybody knows why. Everybody knows why. We just think that if we try to take control, we are terrible people. But the truth is, how many times have I said it in this video? Too many fucking times to count. <laughs> that is the answer. The natural response. <laughs> yeah. They are natural. Look at chimps, and I'm not. You know, we we want to think as humans that we're so much more sophisticated than the dogs and the chimps and everything that we shouldn't be doing. But guess what? As long as we're still in this human form <laughs> and we're still restricted, <laughs> you want to live with them in your house. The only other option is not have them, right? If you want them in your house, you got to play by the rules a little bit. And the rules is if 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 if, if I don't like here's the, here's the simplest way that I've ever put this in my life. The, the the real rule is there's two of them. If I say stop, stop. If I say do, do. That's it. <laughs> now let's find out about that, <laughs> right? And then as the days go on, the dog finds out, and everything's fine because the relationship, the dynamic, this is what, they are very relationship based, they can't get their eyes off of me, right? And then, and then when I start to go like this, it means more. Oh yes, I like that, you know? And you know, Mac wants some of that too, I can see it, but he's being a good boy by staying right there. This dog believes that he is mine now, because he's at that point in the, in the, he's been here enough weeks that he thinks this is life now. Good. Just in time for him to go home. Just in time for him to go home, but, it, but it's a beautiful place for him to be in. I'm very proud of him. I'm cleaning up all of the gallons of drool that came from Mac. And I'm going to pet Mac for doing really good right now. Because look how good Mac Watch. is doing right now. Look how good Mac look what, is doing Look what he'll do. Yeah, yeah, he caught himself, though. Yep. That's the be beauty of being on the place bed. It's such a clear boundary. It's also the beauty of the e collar because look at my body language. I'm not, I didn't have to get exact, I already have a button. If he got, if he crossed that line, I was going to go yep. tap. And then that's called the correction. And then direction is with my, my body language and my words go lay down or whatever. So the correction first, then the direction. That sounds simple, right? Everybody does it backwards. Everyone tries to direct, say, direct. Say, go, go, go. go. No settle. Correction. No. no correction so the way it works, if the dog does something wrong, correct and then direct. If a dog does something wrong, you don't say direct. So, so let's say you got off the bed and I didn't want him to. I don't say place. I correct him getting off the bed, and, <laughs> and then, then I say, say place. place. It's <laughs> it a simple so change. It's a simple change <laughs> of a millisecond. It makes it literally a good dog or a dog who doesn't listen. Period. That's it. Right. So it's just uh, if you and then here's if you're giving a command, it goes like this. You give the command, whatever it is. I'm not going to say one out loud here because these guys are right here. Say the command. You give a one Mississippi, and if the dog didn't do it, you correct, and then you ask the command again. If the dog still didn't comply, you correct. Usually, typically, a little firmer. So the dog, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. I ask once, you didn't do it, I correct once. The dog learns this system, and then they learn that they don't need to be, they learn that they're in control of the correction. Mm -hmm. So if you say the command, and they do it, they learn that they don't get corrected. So it's very clear. Yeah. And also, that is another change, because most people would just, what will they do? They'll ask for the command, the dog won't do it, so then they'll, Ask for the command, it'll be like this, it'll be like, I'll say sit, whatever. They'll say sit, and then they'll say sit, 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 They're all sit. Sick. How many of these commands are given? So, so we're saying sit, you didn't do it, correction. They're abusing the commands, sit. they're trying to micromanage and use them 
um, as a band-aid for the bad behaviors oh, and of instead things. of using the command when it's really practical. We're not talking really about the owners it. of these dogs, by the way. No, this We're is talking everybody. about dog, gen- dog owners in general. This is, the, this is the epidemic that's going around. Is pe- people are doing it just slightly wrong and it's having Massive. tremendously huge consequences. <laughs> That's why we're so busy. <laughs> I mean, you just, you just can't, <laughs> we can't keep up with the volume of people who need help. So, um, but, okay, mentality is everything though. You don't need to know every little thing and every little piece of knowledge. If you have the right mentality, I know people, like I told you, where I come from, they don't really know any technical thing about dog training. They just have the right mentality. So the responses that I said, you know, those slight differences, yes. they just did them naturally. Yes, and so here's a good example. You can have a mentality of, I am not going to accept any rude behavior from anyone. And that includes my My dogs. dogs. And I respect that. So you wouldn't allow a person to be rude to you. You wouldn't allow people to come into your house and start smoking. Um, you You wouldn't allow these things. There's somewhere where you draw the line. And you can extend that to your dogs and simply say, I'm not going to allow my dogs to fight. And from this day forward, you will take action on enforcing that rule and yes. the boundary that you've set. In which these people Even have. if you have no knowledge on how to do so, you'll figure it out. I think so. Because, all the, because I'm an idiot and I figured it out by looking up the right things. I wasn't looking up, how do I reward my dog uh, in order to, uh, for alternative behaviors? How do I stuff food into my dog's mouth to get them to stop being aggressive? I didn't look that up. I seen that that was an option, and I said, "I'll look. I'll look into that in a minute because I knew once I knew I was going to be a dog trainer, I want to understand that. Look at this. That was a correction. I didn't even give him the direction because he got it right. <laughs> so the more I, if he got it, if he didn't know what to do, I'd give him direction. But I'm not overfeeding him the answer because I don't want a dog. I have to tell him what to do every day. I hardly have to tell Riggins what to do every now and then. It's like, hey, not that way, this way. But it's because just correct the things you don't like." direct and as the days go on they know what you want instead they offer it and then i'm turning around and I've had, i was saying something completely stupid before what was it? i was saying oh yeah the information's out there okay let me just say it more blunt i wasn't being blunt enough i was being silly when i looked up dog training i remember i was 27 and i said i seen the options nothing clicked with me as far as me thinking it was something i needed to go down the rabbit hole until i seen the dog whisperer, Susan Milan. And the reason why is because I seen for the first time somebody correcting a dog. Something that looked more familiar to me, like the, my dad taking the uh, um, magazine and swatting my dog, uh, our dog, on the nose for counter surfing. Something like that. It reminded me more of that. So then I said, oh, this is, oh, that's right. This is the avenue. This is an avenue to go down to stop bad behaviors. It's all there. And then you start figuring out about e-collars. You can learn all the techniques on your own if you want to. Nobody has time to do that like a trainer would. I understand. That's why there's programs like this. But it's the mentality of when you're searching it, do you want to just, let's just have fun and let's just, this guy's falling asleep. Let's just go and get a pouch of food like this and start doing the click and feed thing. And I'm not saying that that isn't amazing stuff, but it's not it's tricks. rehab. It's tricks. It's impressive for what it is. Yeah. It's impressive for what it is. And I studied that because that's the other half of the science. And we put them both together here. I use, obviously, positive reinforcement as well, but I'm not doing command food, command food, command food, command food. Let me tell you something, how fast that falls apart as soon as you're in real life. How you train (laughs) it, how you train it, the association that the dog has of how it feels while I'm learning is how they're gonna feel when you go to use it in real life. So if it's a big softy fest and everybody's just like, everybody's getting trophies even though they're not (laughs) performing, right? Then when it comes to actually using it, guess what's there? The lack of seriousness, the lack of it being important to the dog. It's not, and then also let's pause again. I said this a million times, everybody already knows that's not real life. That's just something we, we've learned that we could say, dogs and many other animals can learn to do an exchange, right? They can learn to be like, hey, if you try to do something that I'm trying to ask you to do, then I'll give you something that you want. And, and we found out that they could do that, and we're like, let's throw the baby out with the bathwater. We don't need punishment anymore, because look, we can just make him sit. Look, he understands sit without punishment. I understand that. He does understand sit without punishment, but he's not gonna listen to you. 
<laughs> just because he learned how to read and write doesn't mean he's going to write a, you know, it could be a manifesto or, or a love letter. It, 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 it's, it, you can teach the language without punishment. I'm not denying that. But I'm saying doing so leaves you the inability to punish. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how. It became we, so popular. But I don't know how we got off on this topic. <laughs> Because Great. it's related. Because it when related. people go, I need to train my dog. They get a little. I just seen it today. A little pouch here. Stop. Click, click, <laughs> and they're they're training. But let me give you two dogs that are fighting. And you know what happens? I see it time and time again. There's no help there. Look at the breeds. We're not taking on the nasty pitties. No, 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 no. We're taking on the fluff fluffs, the smart dogs, right? Everybody already knows it's true. The people who don't like what I'm saying already know it's true. You know what it's good for, and you know what it's not good for. And it's not good for this. I did not achieve this level of balance and harmony by saying, if you don't fight, I'll give you food. They're saying, bitch, we're going to fight and you're still going to give me food. Because that's what, what's going to happen. Do you know what happened this morning? So I've been giving Jesse a banana Yeah. and saying, after you finish your banana, you can have your iPad. Right, right, right. Guess what he said to me this morning? What did he say? I don't want the iPad. I'm not finishing the banana. Nice, because they have that option. Yeah, and then and then you say, "Oh fuck, well, they now got what?" It. And then you're like, "I got to get a higher value." Yeah, hang on. Instead of a banana, how about ice cream? The same thing we do with the dogs. Instead of the treat, how about a piece of chicken? Eventually, they, they, run, they, they know that's they all care. you are as a dispenser. Yes, and a trade system rather than a respecting. Listen, the relationship they get in the wild is not like that. Yes, oh, they oh. give each other food. Yes, they share with each other. Sometimes, sometimes they don't. But they also live off from boundaries being set and respecting. They can. They literally. They literally. Once they find out the hierarchy that that they that they naturally sit in and they're in that role, which when they're below a human, they can be there. The stress goes away. When they're in a role that they're not supposed to be in in the natural world, they're anxious. That's why you get all these little, you know, not all the little breeds, but you know, a lot of little yap. <laughs> They're in the wrong position. That's why they're out of their mind. They overreact. If you see a dog overreact, and that's because he's not supposed to be in the position. You know who overreacts? People who aren't confident in what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And then when they think that they're the leader, those overreactions become just associated behaviors, and that just becomes the response they don't even know why anymore. But it all starts because they're not even in the proper spot. They're not supposed to lead. That's a very... Leading means we choose how to deal with situations. So if somebody comes, <laughs> that's me. Unless, of course, you can't teach your dog to bark and still have your thumb, you know, still have to be the leader and be like, you're allowed to bark at this, but that's not what people have. People just can't stop the dog from doing what they do naturally. They bark and then we make excuses about it. And some of us just pretend we like it, I think. Uh, who does like it? I mean, I like when a dog understands when to bark and has good judgment, like this guy. You never hear him bark, but when you do, there's a good reason. Go look for out it. the window. I appreciate there. that. But my, my little dog doesn't have, I, maybe I didn't take the time to teach him, and he's not really, lead, you know, the, it doesn't have the material genetically to kind of be my beta or whatever. They're gonna bark at everything. Every little thing, rah, 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 rah. not only a proper bark, by the way, a proper bark. Somebody's coming down my driveway. You know what I want him to do? You wanna know why? I'm <laughs> so good at that. Because then I can look at him and say, okay, quiet. I'll take care of it. And he knows that's what he's doing. He's letting me know. He's not telling them to fuck off. That's my job to decide whether or not we do that. That's a resource or something. That's my job to, to, to decide how we deal with it. And he understands. Dogs can understand that. So he'll give a little, mm, and then I'll look up there and I'll see something. He's coming down here. You know what I mean? You know what else it doesn't do? It doesn't alert whoever's coming down here that, they're, that we're right here. <laughs> I mean, like, what if we, what if we were hiding? <laughs> You are fucking up everything. <laughs> so they can understand that shit. And it just so happens that if we do be the leader that they don't worry. They know that I can take care of who's coming and going. You know what I mean? And if I look worried, then maybe, you know, I would want your protection. <clears throat> anyway, this is long-winded. We love it long-winded. That's how we, we just, the only way to reach these thoughts sometimes is to just let it go for a while. Um, I'm going to put him, look how relaxed he is. I know. This is what I love. He's sitting like this. He's relaxed. <coughs> he's relaxed. Oh, that's me sneezing. I'm going to do a little bit of interacting with them now. Put him on the, the bed. But listen, this is really what's going on here. He was never put on that bed. Right. This guy. Right? Um, let me take this calmness and elevate it again and get that, you know, see what state we can get Mr. Mackin because he's in the perfect state right now. This is the state that he should ideally be carrying through life mm -hmm. and rarely breaking, only breaking it when we're doing something that 
it's proper to have our energy raised. Like maybe he's playing fetch and he's really into it, or he's hiking up a mountain, he's swimming, he's doing something athletic. He shouldn't be taking that energy <laughs> all around the house. That should be corrected by the human and directed. And this guy will appreciate it. So won't he. So won't he. That's not a comfortable state to be in. You look great right now, Mac. Like a good, good boy. Yeah. What did it take? A week? Ah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but he feels comfortable. Yeah, though. he feels you great. Know, this situation was a little bit, I seen him start to get stressed uh -huh. because he kind of could feel that the, you know, first time around Rue, you know, not really sure what's he's going been attacked. on. Knows he's not allowed to do certain things, not exactly sure what. He knows he wants to run down the stairs. He knows he wants to go in the kitchen. So he just decides. The couch. Yeah, all these things I want to do, I want to do, I want to Now he's dropping it and just seeing that I'm going to be telling him what to do. Yep. And that takes away all the anxiety. Okay? 